Hey guys and welcome back to another Tech Tutorial Tuesday, the series where you guys ask questions and I do my best to answer them as quickly and efficiently as possible. And today I wanted to do a little bit of a follow up to one of the previous videos where we talked about um, the best hardware or the most recommended hardware for running your Home Assistant on. And I wanted to follow that up with um, explaining all of the different types of installations that are available for Home Assistant, clear up some misconceptions and sort of give you the best or the most recommended way to install Home Assistant um, if you're unsure where to get started and sort of what makes them different to each other, what is the best one for each scenario. So that is what we're going to do today. If you like this video, make sure to drop it like and get subscribed if you aren't already. And if you want your question answered in the next Tech Tutorial Tuesday, make sure to leave it in the comments down below and you never know, I might just answer it. Okay, so you watched my previous video, you've picked up your brand new shiny hardware for running Home Assistant, whether that's a Raspberry Pi or a big server, that is not ideal. So like I was saying, you watched the previous video all about Home Assistant hardware and you picked up your brand new shiny piece of hardware for running Home Assistant on, whether that is a Raspberry Pi or an Intel NUC or something similar and you log on to the Home Assistant website and oh my god that is a lot of installation methods. You see words like Home Assistant OS, HASIO, Supervisor, Supervised, Home Assistant Container, Home Assistant Core, where do you begin with it all? Previously, there were a number of ways to install Home Assistant and the naming scheme for those installation types was pretty confusing to say the least. We had words like Home Assistant, Home Assistant Virtual Environment, Home Assistant Docker, HAS.io, HAS.io, HAS.OS. Yeah, it was just um, a lot of different terminologies and kind of very confusing mess. But they've since renamed those installation types back in early 2020, and I do think they make a lot more sense, at least in my opinion. We now have four main installation types, and they are Home Assistant OS, Home Assistant Container, Home Assistant Supervised, and Home Assistant Core. And we're gonna get into what exactly those four installation types are in just a few minutes. But to understand those installation types, we first need to understand some of the core or key components that go into making Home Assistant work. At the moment, we have three key components that go into making the Home Assistant stack. And the easiest way I've found to think about these is to think of them in layers. At the bottom, we have Home Assistant OS, which is kind of like your base layer. And then on top of that, we have Home Assistant Supervisor, and then at the very top, we have Home Assistant Core. Our base layer, Home Assistant OS, hopefully doesn't need any explanation, but it's the OS just like Windows or Mac OS, and it's responsible for handling the hardware and also the software. Our top layer, Home Assistant Core, is the piece of software that we all have come to know and love, and it's responsible for handling things like integrations, automations, um, blueprints, scripts, your dashboard, and all of those good features. And then in the middle, we have Home Assistant Supervisor. And the way I kind of understand this is that it's the middleman between Home Assistant Core and Home Assistant OS. And it's kind of bridges that gap. It acts as a middleman and it gives us access to features like snapshots and add-ons, and it kind of manages our containers for us. Here's where things might get a little bit complicated. So we'll do our best to keep them as simple as possible. If we think about the layers of a cake, you can't have the upper and the middle layers without having that base layer first. So you can't have the icing and the jam without that base sponge first. Well, this is kind of like a reverse cake. You can, you can have Home Assistant Core without having Home Assistant Supervisor and without having Home Assistant OS. You can also have Home Assistant Core and Home Assistant Supervisor without having Home Assistant OS, but you can't have Home Assistant OS without having Home Assistant Supervisor and Home Assistant Core. I think that analogy made sense. In this analogy, why didn't I make Home Assistant Core the base sponge layer? And why didn't I make Home Assistant OS the top icing layer? And the simple answer is, it just doesn't seem right to have an OS as the top layer. That's too big a key component to be the icing. But I think we've talked enough about cakes for this video. Uh, hopefully then that analogy made sense. If it did, leave a comment down below just saying cakes. Cakes. Questionable analogies aside, remember earlier we talked about the four main installation types for Home Assistant. We have Home Assistant OS, 
Home Assistant Supervised, Home Assistant Container and Home Assistant Core. So which one should you choose and how do they differ from each other? Well, Home Assistant OS is gonna be the easiest and simplest way to get started for most people. It's gonna give you the full Home Assistant experience that you would come to expect, including add-ons and snapshots, as well as a fully managed OS. So you don't have to worry about updating the OS yourself and if you did, then you wouldn't have to worry about one component breaking another because it's all handled by Home Assistant OS. It's available on a wide range of platforms and they also come with pre-built images, meaning it's pretty much guaranteed to work with your hardware. There's pre-built images available for Raspberry Pis, Odroids, Intel Nux, as well as virtual machine images, meaning you can run it on platforms like Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. And this is gonna give you access to the full stack, so Home Assistant Core, Home Assistant Supervisor, and obviously Home Assistant OS. And this is definitely the solution I would recommend for most people. Next up, we have Home Assistant Supervised. And this is where you want to have access to things like snapshots and add-ons, but you want to have a little bit more control over the OS. Or perhaps you already have an OS running that's doing other things, other tasks, and you want to load up Home Assistant on it. So that's where the Home Assistant Supervised is a good option. This gives you access to Home Assistant Core and Home Assistant Supervisor, but not Home Assistant OS. So essentially you're in charge of managing the underlying OS. Then we have Home Assistant Container, which is where you just want access to Home Assistant Core. You don't care about things like snapshots or add-ons, but you do want to run it in a Docker environment, meaning you get all of the benefits that go along with that containerized system. This is as opposed to our final one, which is Home Assistant Core. And this is where you just want base Home Assistant, no additional frills, and you don't want to run it in Docker or a containerized system. You want to install it in a Python virtual environment, meaning that you're in full control over the entire OS. Or perhaps you also don't have an OS that is capable of running Docker for some reason, then Home Assistant Core is the installation that you will use. And this is definitely the most advanced option on this list. This is definitely the most advanced option because you are entirely responsible for updating the OS, as well as the dependencies that Home Assistant relies on, as well as the Home Assistant software itself. Let's finally clear up some common misconceptions that I see on my travels around the internet when it comes to the different Home Assistant installations. And the first one is I see people saying, I use Home Assistant OS, I don't have Docker. And this is actually untrue. All except Home Assistant Core use Docker as their underlying mechanism for installing Home Assistant. So if you have any of the installation types except from Home Assistant Core, then you are using Docker. Even if you install Home Assistant OS as a virtual machine, then this still uses Docker. The next one I often see is that supervised isn't a supported installation method. And this is actually untrue because it is actually on the Home Assistant website as an installation method. It's one of the options that they actually list on their website. And the reason that this, um, or people seem to get confused over this is because they use an unsupported OS. Home Assistant Supervised is a supported installation method as long as you use the OS that is in the requirements, which at the time of filming is currently Debian 10. The reason people think it's unsupported is because they install it on an unsupported OS such as Ubuntu and then they get a message in Supervisor telling them that this is an unsupported installation method. It's not an unsupported installation method, it's an unsupported OS. So Debian 10 is the one you need if you're going to go the supervised route. The next one I often see people asking is, will I miss out on Home Assistant integrations or updates or other features if I don't use Home Assistant OS? And the answer is no. Remember earlier we talked about Home Assistant Core being entirely separate from Home Assistant OS. They're kind of their own separate layers. And so Home Assistant Core gives you access to all the features on one on Home Assistant OS as it does on Home Assistant Supervised, for example. So you'll get access to all of the same integrations, all of the same automation features and functionalities, all of the same dashboard options, etc, etc. 
etc. The only things that will differ is the functions that Supervisor gives you. So things like being able to do add-ons or snapshots or the updates. Those are the only features that are different. The main base features of Home Assistant Core are the exact same on Home Assistant OS as they are on Home Assistant Container, Supervised and Core. Hopefully that makes sense. As a quick summary, which installation method do I recommend for most people? And the one I'm gonna recommend for the vast majority of people is Home Assistant OS. It's got a large list of compatible devices, including being able to run on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux through virtual machines, as well as all those pre-built images that we discussed earlier. And it's gonna give you the full um, home assistant experience as well as the smoothest and easiest experience overall. If you want the benefits of add-ons and snapshots as well as easier updating and you already have an OS in place or you want to have more um, control over the OS, then Home Assistant Supervised is the method that you should choose. Finally, if you don't have a compatible device for running Home Assistant OS, or you don't have the ability to run VMs, or perhaps you already have an OS up and running and configured the way you like it, then you're gonna want to choose Home Assistant Container or Home Assistant Core. But that's about all the time we have for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, hopefully it cleared up some of the confusion regarding all of the different installation types. And if it didn't, at least we got to have a good chat about cake, which is uh, never a bad thing. So yeah, if you want to support the channel, you can do so by becoming a Patreon on Patreon and your support allows me to keep on making the videos just like this one. Thank you to all my current Patreon supporters. Your support is very much appreciated. If you like this video, make sure to drop it a like and get subscribed if you aren't already. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.